Sure, the show is a technical marvel, but it's also an emotional and riveting narrative ride. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 moments from The Dark Crystal Age of Resistance. <laughs> you like having your belly rubbed? <laughs> I guess so. For this list, we're looking at some of the best, most exciting, heartfelt, and memorable moments from this Netflix original prequel series to Jim Henson's groundbreaking 1982 film, The Dark Crystal. Number 10, The Archer's Sacrifice. Get help! No time. Help me up. Your friends are in danger. As we learn from Skekra and Ergo, the Skeksis and the Mystics were originally a single species the Urskex, but in their attempts to use the power of the crystal to purify themselves, they inadvertently divided each of their bodies into two separate beings. Though few of the Skeksis and Uru see eye to eye, each such pair remains intimately linked. In the case of the hunter Skekmal, his other half is the Archer, and after the Archer fails to kill his counterpart with arrows, he makes the ultimate sacrifice, taking his own life to stop the deadly hunter just as the latter is about to kill Rianne. Now we shall see what lives of the dreams end. <laughs> the archer didn't get a lot of screen time, but he nonetheless made a big impression. Number 9. Brea's Sleight of Hand The youngest of the Almadris daughters is your quintessential baby of the family. You'll definitely be sent to the Order of Lesser Service now, sister. You're just jealous, Celadon. I got to ride in the Lord's carriage. Unruly, prone to error, and very much at the whim of her own imagination, Brea is treated like a child by both of her older sisters, as well as her mother. When she takes it upon herself to investigate the history of the Skeksis and the logic of their rulership, she quickly begins to prove herself to be far more competent and intelligent than most give her credit for. When she visits Elder Kadia of the Sifa clan, she rightfully guesses that there's something fishy about the drink he's given her, and so she creates a distraction and pulls a switcheroo. It's well played, and gave us a whole new appreciation for this character. To the crystal. To the crystal. Number 8. Give the crystal your fear. This is the moment that sets the entire plot of the show in motion. For starters, what Rianne witnesses turns him into a lifelong enemy of the Skeksis, one who will go on to plant the seed of revolution. It's the crystal of truth. Yes, isn't it lovely? Perhaps even more importantly, though, is that it signifies a major shift for the Skeksis themselves. Previously, they were just your run-of-the-mill, manipulative authoritarian rulers. When they kidnapped an innocent Gelfling and killed her in cold blood to rob her of her essence, it was their first step on a path to genocide. Mira was a strong, intelligent, and just all-around compelling character. We only knew her for a single episode, but like Rianne, we mourned her loss nonetheless. Number 7. The Dark Coronation The Skeksis are evil, but we see them for what they are from the very outset, and so we can appreciate them at their villainous face value. Celadon, however, is perhaps the most frustrating character in the entire series. Take no! these traitors away! Wait! Her commitment to the status quo is such that she'll turn on the whole family. Though she might be naive, she's also rather cunning and knows how to work a room. When her claim to the title of Al Madra is challenged, rather than enter a contest she knows she'll lose, she fashions herself a new crown slash outfit to circumvent the conflict. Loyal Madras, I am humbled by your presence on the day of my coronation. It's quite the power move, but audiences got some much needed catharsis when the Skeksis to whom she's so dedicated gave her a harsh reality check. The old Maldra was a shepherd. Now it's time to harvest the herd! <laughs> Number 6. The Creation of the Gartham Perhaps one of the most bittersweet things about watching Age of Resistance is that because it's a prequel, we are doomed by the knowledge of where the story inevitably leads. While the future of Thra can be a bit of a downer at times, it is rather cool to be able to bear witness to the events that led to the world we first encountered in the 1982 film. Easily one of the coolest species from the original movie is the Gartham, a giant and incredibly dangerous insectoid-slash-crustacean-like race that serves the Skeksis. 
In the season finale of this prequel, we actually get to see how Skektek created them. It was a real treat for longtime fans of the franchise, not to mention a nice addition to the Dark Crystal mythology. Number 5. Remembering the Parents the use of puppets might make The Dark Crystal Age of Resistance look like a children's show, but after watching just a single episode, it quickly becomes clear that this series deals with some fairly mature themes. Among them is the concept of loss. Maybe we could have our own ceremony right here. That would help. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Both Rianne and Brea had somewhat challenging relationship with their respective parents, but following the death of Rianne's father and Brea's mother, both young Gelflings find themselves overcome with emotion as they reflect upon the parents they unexpectedly lost. Joined by their friends, they deliver a heart-wrenching song in honor of the fallen. It might be in a language we don't understand, but you don't need to know the words to appreciate the sentiment. The melody says it all, and it's truly beautiful. <sighs> Number 4. Deet Unleashes Her Dark Magic Earlier in this episode, Deet and Rianne seem poised to have an intimate moment of connection, only for the former to suddenly recoil. It will be better. I, I should get back to work. As we pan to her hand, we see that Deet, like so many of the creatures of Thra, has become infected with the Darkening, perhaps a result of her having taken on the power of the Sanctuary Tree. Though her new powers and influence will clearly have devastating consequences for the once lighthearted Gelfling, in this moment, her powers are the epitome of badass. Emperor Skexo unleashes the power of the Darkening, only for Deet to absorb it and fire it right back. Get away. The move stuns everyone present, and viewers at home likely had a similar reaction. Running away! Yes! 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 Number 3. The Carriage Ride Rescue When Rianne is apprehended by the hunter, the latter hands him over to Skexil the Chamberlain, who insists that he be allowed to bring him back to the Crystal Castle. Oh! I need Gelfling alive! Must bring before Emperor. What unfolds is a tense conversation between Gelfling and Skeksis, with the Chamberlain seemingly talking Rianne into a corner and breaking his will. Thankfully, our young Gelfling hero gets a much needed dose of hope in the form of a surprise rescue from his friends Naya and the recently freed Gurjan. Hello there! Huh? Gurjan! Ah! Ah! Hey, Rianne! Ah! Naya! It's ah! time to go! The action is awesome in its own right, but this is also the first time that Rianne sees his good friend Gurjan again, who, all things considered, he believed to be a goner. Both powerful and thrilling, it makes for a great moment of television. Oh, well, that was fun. Number 2. The Hunter vs. Rianne and Orden Though this moment ends in tragedy, it was a pleasure to watch, delivering not only unparalleled puppet combat, but also nailing the emotional beat and sense of drama. I've come for my prize. It's made clear from the first episode of the series that Rianne and his father have some issues to work through. The former looks up to his dad and clearly seeks his approval, but due to his youthful ways, Rianne often appears at odds with his father. And this is only made worse by Orden's refusal to believe his son about the fate of Mira. In this epic battle, however, the two stand together, not just as captain and soldier, but more importantly, as father and son. Not quite like old times. Oh, very well, father and son. And because of Orden's sacrifice, Rianne survived to fight again. My son! Podlings and Gelflings and Skeksis? Oh my. You know, I hope this leads to a resurgence for Muppetry, because there's nothing like some Jim Henson productions in your life, right? What did we place at number one on this list? Let's see after these honorable mentions. Oh, I beg you to keep still! Expediency is the key, princess! And when wielded by Gelfling, holds the power to unite the seven clans and defeat the Skeksis. Join me at Stone in the Wood. Here, we will make our stand. Jeez. 
Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Lore to the Rescue When Brea and company are taken away by the Skeksis, the adorable and loyal Lore is none too pleased. Sensing Brea's in trouble, he comes bursting out of his underground home, which just so happens to be under the All Madras throne room. And so the newly villainous Celadon gets thrown to the ground in a moment that surely elicited cheers from viewers. Rianne is already attempting a rescue, but it's Lore who finishes the job, bringing some much-needed muscle just in the nick of time. My carriage! Taking Celadon down a notch and giving our heroes a much-needed win in one swift move? Way to go, Lore! Hello there? <sighs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.